I get asked to uh, deal with performance problems from time to time, and um, the general approach I have to performance problems is to um, look at system resources. And then if system resources aren't an issue, then look at the individual program. So uh, the first thing to do is to go into Finder, then select Applications, and then go to Utilities, and then select Activity Monitor. So uh, it shows CPU, Memory, Energy, Disk, Network. I like to pop up the uh, CPU history and the GPU history. Um, so if we look at CPU resources, you can see I'm running Thinkorswim uh, because there's the launcher app. It's using 33% of one CPU core. So um, I'm about 90% idle, so that makes complete sense. As you can see, uh, Thinkorswim is basically just using um, the two efficiency cores. It's not even touching the performance cores at all. So uh, Thinkorswim does not use a lot of uh, CPU on my machine. Uh, it's an M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I'm running about 100 charts with uh, quite a bunch of studies, so it's um, a pretty efficient way to run that. On the GPU cores, you can see that I'm using about 60% GPU cores. Uh, this is generally not a problem. I mean, when I run Active Trader Pro, uh, plus a few other things, it can go up to about 80%. And but. I've also run it on the Mac Mini, which has, I think, half the GPU cores, and um, it's not a problem in actual usage, even if the GPU usage is very high. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why that is, but um, I, I can use a lot of GPU, but it, it, it doesn't seem to be a problem if I get really high in practice. So. You know, if CPU is using like three, four, five hundred percent, then yeah, you have a problem. Or if um, idle drops to like ten or twenty percent, then you have a problem. It could be that you have other programs that are running that are using a lot of GPU that's competing with Thinkorswim. Um, on Activity Monitor, to do the ranking, you just click on the item. So if you wanted to see all of the processors by descending CPU, this is the way to do it. If you want to see ascending, then you click on this and it does it in the other order. So uh, that's a general use of Activity Monitor. The next thing to look at is memory. So um, we can see that launchers uh, using up 2.65 gigabytes of RAM. Um, Thinkorswim typically takes uh, probably three gigabytes during the trading day. It's taking a little bit less because it's 4 a.m. And uh, I have 32 gigas of RAM, currently using 16.88. When I run a virtual machine, this I run it with like nine gigabytes of RAM, so this thing goes way up. Um, 10 gigabytes of cache file, completely normal. Uh, swap is at zero. I do not like my systems to swap at all, so I usually get enough RAM so that I don't have any swap. Swap can slow things down. Um, there's also some amount of compressed memory. Uh, in general, I don't mind compressed because you, the CPU does the compression and compression, and theoretically, that shouldn't be a performance issue. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I haven't done any testing to determine that. But I generally try to avoid swap because uh, a program like Thinkorswim needs to uh, update um, quite a bit, and if you swap out some pages, it could slow it down quite a bit. Um, I generally think that 32 gigabytes is, well, I, I can run Thinkorswim on a 16 gigabyte machine with no problems. 
uh, running Think or Swim and Fidelity Active Trader Pro and a couple of other things. My guess is it's tight on eight gigabyte systems. Um, I like 32 because I uh, do video editing as well as uh, run virtual machines, so it's nice to have the flexibility. Energy just tells you uh, basically how much power it's using. Um, it's not terribly useful for performance analysis uh, unless you're running a laptop and uh, running Thinkorswim or, or you're trying to figure out why your battery's draining so fast. Disk can be a factor. If you have excessive uh, disk writes, uh, I suppose I could slow down. I don't know. Let's see. Does uh, Thinkers, Thinkers, I don't know that Thinkorswim does a lot of uh, SSD I.O. But SSD I.O. can slow the system down. If you've got other stuff doing a lot of writes, that can slow the whole system down. And network is always a factor. Um, if you have some other program that's using a tremendous amount of uh, network capacity, then it's going to impact Thinkorswim because it, it's basically a network program. So, uh, it was Thinkorswim in? I don't know if Thinkorswim is in here. Let's go by here. Yeah, Launcher is. Uh, it doesn't do that much uh, when the market's closed. So um, <coughs> those are your system resources to look at. And the drain on system resources can be caused by Think or Swim or it could be caused by something else which slows down your running of Think of Swim. Uh, some of the cases that are really hard to track down is if you have like a crash loop, like if, if you have some kind of a hardware or network or some kind of a Mac OS bug and it like create it crashes it creates a crash log every you know two or three minutes or even every like 10 or 15 seconds then it has to write a crash log and uh, that basically just consumes it eventually consume up all your SSD space and it, it, it's a CPU sync so those are the one of the annoying things uh, that can happen, and, and those are a pain in the neck to track down. So the next thing is, if your system's fine, your hardware's fine, you're not using all the resources, or you're not using a lot of resources, then it's possible that it's your thinkorswim uh, studies. So I have 100 charts. Um, 64 of them are basic charts. That is, they just show candlestick charts. Um, 20 of them, sorry, 20, 22 of them are uh, studies. They have, uh, I think, three or four studies each. And I've got uh, Brian Watts' uh, Sicilian Goat, which is uh, actually a fairly complicated chart. And I have his um, zigzag retracement chart. And I think that's I think that's actually fairly complicated too. And I have a, a couple of others uh, on Fidelity Active Trader Pro. I typically run um, two to five charts, uh, and they've each got like a couple of studies each. Um, Active Trader Pro runs under Rosetta and Wine, uh, and it's it's a dog, uh, but that, that's why I don't. I used to run all my charting on Active Trader Pro. I moved all my charting to Thinkorswim because uh, Thinkorswim, at least you can run native Apple Silicon. So, what I would do is if Thinkorswim is using a ton of CPU time on your system and that's clearly what's slowing it down, then um, I take all my studies and remove them or save them somewhere in a safe workspace and then add them back one by one so that I can find out uh, which study is causing uh, the performance problem. And uh, that it's a pain in the neck to do, but uh, 
it's, it's a straightforward way to isolate performance problems. Um, another issue is um, that I've heard of from a few users is memory, where uh, you set a lower bound for memory so that it allocates that memory when it starts up. And um, sometimes it doesn't observe that limit or it never gets there. Now, on my uh, system, I, I do not set the, the thinkorswim memory limits, and um, it, uses two, it uses two to three or, or whatever, and I don't have any issue with it. So it's possible that there's an issue with the memory limiting stuff. I don't know, but I've only heard of this issue from a, uh, a couple of people. Uh, there was one person I'm chatting with in email, oh sorry, with uh, in the social media on YouTube about this issue, and um, I'm not. The thinkorswim people are probably better at debugging this than I am. Um, I'm more of a user. I use it casually, and I just apply computer science concepts. But um, the Thinkorswim support team is actually really good about performance issues, memory issues. Uh, if you've got a study that's uh, inefficient or uses a lot of resources, they can sometimes help in making them more efficient. Um, there was one guy that had uh, a fairly powerful system, and um, he was running a study, <coughs> and it was uh, basically maxing out the CPUs on his system. And um, it was a he, it was a continuous study, so I guess uh, Thinkorswim was uh, whacking away um, even at sub-second intervals. And he changed <coughs> the interval at which it checks things to like two or three seconds, and that greatly improved, that uh, greatly decreased the CPU consumption. So. Uh, Thinkorswim es <coughs> essentially has one or more programming languages, and um, the nice thing about programming languages is that they give you an incredible amount of power to be creative, but you can also absolutely shoot yourself in the foot. Um, if you create something and you don't understand or know what the resources are that uh, are required to run that study, or you're using a combination of studies that uh, use up a lot of CPU resources uh, together, then you can come up with something that doesn't run efficiently on Thinkorswim. Um, sometimes getting more hardware helps, uh, sometimes it doesn't matter. But uh, that's another area. Uh, obviously, you don't have a lot of control over that because Thinkorswim just presents you something you can run, and it doesn't necessarily tell you whether it uses a lot of resources or not. But um, you can always tell because uh, you can run it with or without a study, and if it runs really slowly with the study, then that's probably what's causing your performance issues. So these are just uh, some general ideas and what I like to look at if I'm dealing with performance issues on Thinkorswim or Act Active Trader Pro or uh, any software package in general.